Hello everybody, Chopamon here, and today I am doing something a little bit different. I'm usually not one to do hardware reviews, but in this case I was kind of interested in this particular product, the uh, Pound Technology, hmm, Pound, the Pound Technology HD Link Cable for the PlayStation 2. This particular product was brought to my attention via the Limited Run Games is a newsletter that I am subscribed to, and I might as well get this out of the way. This isn't a sponsored review of any sort. I purchased this on my own, and I wasn't asked to review it, but I was kind of curious about what this thing was, and so here we are. Essentially, it's supposed to make PlayStation 2 games compatible with modern televisions. For those of you who aren't into uh, retro gaming, a lot of the challenges that are being faced with uh, using legacy hardware is that a lot of HD televisions no longer support lower resolutions that are being output by these legacy consoles. So in a lot of cases, you will get just blank screens where modern televisions can't detect the signal. Now I haven't tested any of my retro consoles on an Ultra HD television of any sort. However, I am looking at purchasing a new television in the near future as my old mid-2000s flat screen is starting to get a little uh, burn-in every now and then if I linger on an image for too long. So being able to play legacy consoles is sort of a factor for me when it comes to purchasing a new television. but. I know I am a minority in that sort, so I kind of have to just deal with it when it comes to purchasing a new television. So this is where the HD link cable for the PlayStation 2 comes in. Uh, it boasts that it's also compatible with PlayStation 1 games and the PlayStation consoles. More on that later. It also upscales games to 720p for maximum compatibility and uses HD RGB signal. Again. More on that later. I initially was recording this as a an unboxing of sorts. So as you can see, I doing on-screen video stuff isn't my forte. Um, apologies for the quality and the shot angle. It, it isn't something I usually do. However, in the box, you get a baggie with all that you need. You get the HD link itself with the word pound on it. Hmm. Inside the baggie, you get a standard USB to USB micro connection. It's pretty long, as that's what powers the device. And you also get a set of HDMI cables that are pretty lengthy themselves. Hmm. And you also get a quick start guide. Since this device is meant to be a plug and play, there are no options in terms of the device itself. And as pointed out by the manual, and you will see in a little bit that one of the common issues is that you will get a green image. And that is caused by having your PlayStation configured to play on component cables instead of composite cables. More on that later. I thought the best feel for the for testing these cables out in a non high techy kind of way would be to just plug them into my TV and see how they work. And comparing them to what using standard uh, component cables would look like. So, on to the gorilla footage. So, as a baseline, here is Dracon, the Ancient's Gates for the PlayStation 2. Now, the footage didn't quite pick up what I saw when it came to the PlayStation 2 logo, and that is some interlacing. So, as you can somewhat see from the footage, it looks pretty decent to me the way it is. Again, this is a mid-2000s television, and it knows how to handle 4080i resolutions. And now switching over to the HD link cables themselves. It starts off looking rather green, but in full screen. And once I fixed that issue, I noticed that the PlayStation 2 logo didn't have that same interlacing. It looked a lot smoother, a lot softer. Though I did notice that some of the some of the text when it came to the Sony Computer Entertainment of America Presents is a little fuzzier than, than it was with the component cables. Then we come to the first uh, issue I have with these cables, and, and this particular nitpick comes from my own preferences, and that is that 
I can't play Dracon using these cables in a uh, 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which is what the game was meant to be played as. Now, don't get me wrong, this upscaling it actually looks pretty good. It almost looks like Dracon was meant to be played in a widescreen ratio. But watching this intro, there was something quite off when I recorded this footage that I couldn't quite put my finger on until I later tried using the device with the Elgato to capture some clearer footage. Sticking to the aspect ratio of these link cables, I decided to test this out on a game that, ha that has a widescreen support, although the only thing in my library currently that has that option is Secret H and Clank. Booting it up with the HD link cables, you'd almost be fooled to think that this ridiculously long load screen is actually meant to be in widescreen. It looks fine. It looks fine. The pre-render cutscenes look fine. Though this being a PlayStation 2 port of a PSP game, I'm not entirely sure if these pre-render cutscenes were rendered in, wi in a widescreen ratio, but it looks great. Nothing seems stretched out to me. So again, the standard depth aspect ratio for Dracon is, a, is just a personal preference for me. And since the output is forced to 720p, there is no way I can get my TV to try to adjust the aspect ratio itself. And just to be fair, here is a comparison of Secret Agent Clank on my television with the component cables. I'm playing around with some of the settings. But yeah, aspect ratio wise, if, the, if that doesn't bother you, I think these are actually pretty decent at upscaling. Again, as someone who has a passing interest in playing old consoles on newer televisions and trying to get the best picture, but not really wanting to go out of my way to modify my console's hardware and to try to get the best output pictures. That if you've ever looked up any of these videos for a lot of these legacy consoles, it can get ridiculously expensive. So on to the capture card footage. So while capturing the standard component input kind of illustrated the point of the HD link cable systems. I had the Elgato hooked up to a to a much newer second monitor and the monitor could not detect the 480i output from coming from the Elgato through the HDMI cables. And for consistency sake I also captured secret agent Clank's uh, footage as well and you can see the problem with Elgato is that even though this game can support widescreen resolutions, it limits it to the standard def. Using the link cables, my second monitor was able to display PlayStation 2 games. However, that's when I noticed issue number two, and, and that is that the colors are not as good. And maybe because the monitor is newer, or it's just much closer to my face, I was able to piece together why that is. And that's when I also noticed that there are scan lines kind of going diagonally across the picture. And that's when I realized that the reason why these cables boast that they are compatible with PlayStation 1 games is because you're forced to use the composite output of your PlayStation 2. For those of you who don't know, if you ever hook up component cables to a PlayStation game, for whatever technical reason, you cannot play PlayStation 1 games hooked up to those cables. I guess whatever internal emulator or hardware issue will just not output PlayStation 1 games through component cables. So just to prove that I was right, I loaded up the Elgato again. This time I hooked up the PlayStation 2 using composite cables and I got the same result. Uh, oh boy. And at this point I was just feeling very, very disappointed in these cables. And to be fair with this product, I did grab whatever PlayStation 1 game I had lying around, meaning Darkstone, just to see how well it would display it. And for a PlayStation 1 game, it looks great. I mean, you still have the same issues with the scan lines, but you're also not going to really notice the color issue because that was the only output that the PlayStation 1 had. It also seems to kind of soften the graphics up a little. I know it's not doing some post-rendering thing, but it seems to be tied with that upscaling, kind of removing that interlace, which does make the picture look a little smoother. So I guess it's time to ask myself, 
is it worth it? For me personally, no. But for someone who doesn't mind the RGB display and is looking for a quick solution to hook up their PlayStation 2 to a modern television with no issue, then yeah, this would be a relatively quick and cheap solution. It's only $30 plus shipping. And I'm sure there's some people out there that are saying, why not just emulate the hardware with a computer? Well, there's just something about being able to sit in front of your television and pop in an old retro game, but still for not going out of your way to try to buy a, a CRT television or or buy a PlayStation 3 that can play PlayStation 1 and maybe play PlayStation 2 games. It's a relatively quick and cheap solution. But for me, I still just can't help but be disappointed by this product. And right now, I'm highly considering it, trying to pawn it off on my local used bookstore. But I might keep it around and just do a follow-up video to see how things work out if I do get a new television. If you've managed to stick around and watch this entire video, well, thank you for watching. Again, I know that this is a little unusual for my channel, doing hardware reviews, first impressions, quick looks, whatever you want to call this video. If you're new around here, check out some of my other videos. I usually talk about Mass Effect related topics, or adult games, or sometimes somewhere in the middle of those two things. But whatever your taste is, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.